What's up guys, Dr. Gooden back to talk about the knee for the third time. And in this video, we'll be talking about the muscles of the knee. All right, let's learn about our bodies. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about each of the different groups of muscles that cross the knee before going through them one by one individually to talk about their actions. So the first muscle group is the quadriceps muscle group. Now this group of muscles extends the knee, but one of them also is biarticulate. That would be the rectus femoris because it crosses the hip as well. You can see it up here coming off of the pelvic bone. Now these are located on the anterior compartment of the thigh and because they cross the anterior aspect of the knee down here inserting with the patellar tendon, they cause knee extension. Now also on this anterior aspect of the knee we have what's called the Q angle. And this is the central line of pull for the entire quadriceps muscle. And we can calculate the Q angle by going from the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, down to the patella and forming a vector between those. And then looking at the vector between the tibial tuberosity and the patella. And this angle that's formed right there would be the Q angle. Now this Q angle is normally 15 degrees or less for males and 20 degrees or less in females. But generally females have a higher Q angle due to a wider pelvis. Now why is that important? Well Q angles are dynamic and they vary significantly during planting and cutting activities. So in the previous two videos we talked about how the knee is very structurally sound because of all of the ligaments as well as the musculature that crosses it. But because of this Q angle, especially during, during dynamic activities like cutting and change of direction, we can go into this more extreme Q angle, this extreme knee valgus, which can put a lot of stress on those ligamentous structures. Now the Q angle can be dynamic and it varies significantly during planting and cutting activities. People with higher Q angles generally are more predisposed to varying degrees of potential knee problems. This includes patellar subluxation, dislocation, compression syndrome, chondromalacia, and other ligamentous injuries like ACL tears or MCL tears. For people with above normal Q angles, and in particular, this happens with females more often, it's particularly important to have high levels of strength and endurance in the musculature especially vastus medialis, being on that medial aspect of the knee. Now it's thought that by strengthening vastus medialis, as well as your hip musculature, so gluteus medius, gluteus minimus especially, to correct the Q angle up at the hip as well, and then also even at the foot, so down at the ankle having a very stable and dynamically strong foot and ankle. This can help to correct those knee valgus angles from occurring during jumping, during landing, during cutting movements. Now the hamstring muscle group is responsible for knee flexion and we have three muscles located in the posterior compartment of the thigh, semitendinosus and semimembranosus and biceps femoris. And you'll remember all three of these from the hip videos that we've been over. <clears throat> but we also have the popliteus which assists the hamstrings in knee internal rotation. Now we have a lot of two joint muscles that cross the knee. We have rectus femoris, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, um, sartorius, and gracilis. I believe that's all of them, six. And well, actually technically gastrocnemius is a two joint muscle that crosses the knee, but it crosses the ankle as well, not the hip. But these six muscles that cross the hip and the knee, they're most effective when either the origin or the insertion is stabilized. And this prevents movement in the direction of the contracting muscle. To a degree, these muscles are able to exert greater force when lengthened than when shortened. So this is why, for instance, if you're in a sprint start, you don't wanna be crouched so low that your hips are low to the ground with your knees completely flexed. You actually want a little bit of knee extension going on as your hips are also extended to lengthen your hamstrings appropriately. It's also why during something like football kicking, the kicker invariably leans backwards. 
So he, he leans backwards to raise and fix the rectus femoris origin to make it more effective as in the extensor. Another example is the sartorius muscle. As you increase the total length, it becomes a better flexor at the knee when the pelvis is rotated posteriorly. So remember tipping the cup backwards to pour the water behind, as we saw in the hip videos. When the pelvis is rotated posteriorly and stabilized by the abdominal muscle. So the next time you go to cross your knees or cross your legs while you're sitting, try doing it while leaning forward. And it's gonna be really hard to do that to get sartorius to contract and get your knee into flexion. But if you lean back as you cross your legs, then it will be easier to get into that cross-legged position. And that's probably why it's so comfortable to cross your legs and lean back at the same time. Now the gracilis, sartorius, and semitendinosus, they join together distally to form the pes anserinus. Anserinus, anserinus, again, I don't know the pronunciation there, but what it means is goose foot, because it looks like a goose foot on that anterior surface of the tibia. And it's just below the tibial tuberosity. And then we also have the medial and lateral gastrocnemius heads, which I mentioned, attaching posteriorly on the medial and lateral heads of the femoral condyles. So they do cross the knee on the posterior aspect. We won't talk about those muscles in this video. We'll talk about them when we talk about the lower leg. Now, on to the musculature. Rectus femoris, and some of this should be reviewed from the hip section. We have flexion of the hip, extension of the knee, and also recall that flexion of the hip goes along with anterior pelvic rotation. And then we have the three vasti muscles. These ones are great because they just have one single action for such large muscles, and that would be flexion of the knee. Just notice that lateralis and intermedius and medialis all have slightly different lines of pull. Okay, so here's medialis, and if it was contracting, the force vector might be something like this. And intermedius, it might be something like this. Oops, maybe more like that. And vastus lateralis, something like that. And so because it has three different force vectors, we wanna be careful and strengthen these all in unison. So we don't want something like our vastus lateralis to get too strong and take over, causing patella tracking problems or other issues. Now we have the hamstring muscle group. And this is semitendinosus, biceps femoris, and semimembranosus. And these have a lot more actions than the quadricep muscles. So they do flex the knee, and that's kind of what we're talking about here because we're talking about the knee joint, but they also have extension of the hip, and that's coupled with posterior pelvic rotation of the hip, these two movements. But then semitendinosus, also internally rotates the hip and the knee because it's on this medial aspect. Semimembranosus does the exact same things. Okay, so we have flexion of the hip. Okay, so we have flexion of the knee, extension of the hip, which is coupled with posterior pelvic tilt, it just depends on whether the leg is fixed or if the leg is free, open versus closed chain movement. And then we have internal and internal rotation of the hip and of the flexed knee. Remember that internal and external knee rotation only really occur once the knee is unlocked. And then on the other side, the lateral side, we have biceps femoris, flexion of the knee. So they all, all three of the hamstrings flex the knee and they extend the hip and aid in posterior pelvic rotation. But now biceps femoris being on the lateral aspect, it does external rotation of the hip and of the knee. And here we see popliteus, which does knee flexion, but also assists in internal rotation due to its line of pull, pulling the tibia that way. And the last muscle to talk about is actually gastrocnemius, and we're not gonna talk about it here because of its very important effects on your ankle joint and lower leg musculature functionality. So. That's the end of this video and the end of the knee joint section. If you haven't yet, don't forget to watch the joint movements and bony landmarks of the knee. You can find those over here in this playlist, the structural kinesiology playlist. If you want to continue learning about the next section of the body, meet me over in the video about the foot and ankle joints. We're going to get into the bony landmarks and introduce that section of the body. I'm Dr. Gooden. Thanks for learning about the human body with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe.